Welcome to Parkbench Tutors. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, find us on Facebook or look us up at parkbenchtutors.com. In this podcast, we're going to look at documents which we use for customers. Let's start by just considering documentation and communication generally for a moment. Why do we use documents? Well, we use them for communication. Who with? The suppliers, customers, employees, and we use them for external communication for people such as the tax authorities. But we also use documentation to keep records. Okay, who do we keep records for? Well, we keep records for ourselves, so we keep financial statements, we keep minutes of meetings, and of course we keep records for external authorities. So documents are for communication and for keeping records of information. What type of documents might we use? Let's consider, for example, for suppliers. We have letters, email, purchase orders, returns, remittance advice, for customers. I mean, can you think of for customers? Again, you can have a similar list. Quotations, letters, email, invoices, delivery, packing slips, credit notes, reminders, advertising literature statements. It's pretty obvious then that this communication is rather important and our documentation and how to prepare documents is an important part of accounting. Similarly, how do we communicate with employees? Contracts, salaries, wage slips, rules, procedures. What other communication is there internally? Memos, costing, financial records, sales figures, budgets, projections. And what about externally? Returns to authorities, annual reports, advertising. There is in fact a mass of communication associated with the business. Remember, we've met this idea before, all users of information can in fact be regarded as customers. We can consider internal users and external users. Okay, let's start with a letter, which is a communication to a customer. And let's think about the information that is presented. Here we are, here's our letter. We can see who it's from, who it's to, what it's amount. We can see some details here. And we can see that it's a letter because the payment is overdue. So we've got the name and address of a business, name and address of a customer, dates, the purpose of the letter. All these things, remember, are important for our documentation. A specific request for action, an itemized list, and who the letter is from. So don't forget we should sign all letters we send out. Okay, the letter was prepared from a template. We don't write an individual letter to each customer. We, what we do is start off with the basic details and then usually from a computer program draw in the details that we want. So what is a template? Well a template is an outline document. It's usually held as a computer file and the details are then added as needed and we get the details as I say by extracting the information from the accounts. Why do we use a template? What's the purpose of this? Well it saves a lot of time, it means the information is presented clearly and it ensures that there is consistency. Let's look at another communication, a sample invoice. Here we are. You can see that the details that are shown, or some of the details that are shown there, and we can consider that it shows a business logo, name and address of the business, the customer's name and address, the date, the details of each item, the quantity and the cost. We can also see that it showed the details of tax and a total amount, and what the terms for payment. These are all typical things you would expect to find on an invoice. When we receive money from a customer, we can use a slip to pay in. Here's an example of one. And what information is shown here? In other words, what has to be filled in on this form, which is a pre-printed form? Well, the business has to fill in the date, the amount, who paid the money in, whether the money was in cash or checks, and what the total was that was paid in. Here's another communication to a customer. What type of communication is this? And when do you think it might be used? This is an invoice, sorry, it's a sales return, and this refers to something called credit sales, an idea that you'll meet later. 
and another example here for communication to a customer and this you can see is a receipt it has a receipt number on and it's got the details of monies received and for what so when do you think it might be used well it's when you make a sale and cash is paid for the sale how about this one what is this as a communication and when do you think this might be used what sort of information is shown? Okay, not to be outdone. What type of communication is this? And when do you think this might be used? That ends our introduction to documentation and particularly for documents for customers. This was brought to you by Parkbench Tutors. You can find us at parkbenchtutors.com. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. You can look us up in Facebook or find us at parkbenchtutors.com.